We teach our children to be kind to other people, treat even strangers, particularly strangers, with kindness. What I want to say is even more radical. I am the stranger. I am Elijah, and I should treat myself with kindness. What does it mean to be kind, respectful, and generous toward others, even strangers, if that comes not from a place of high self-regard? I pr probably, like most of you, am sometimes subject to an earworm attack, a bit of song that comes unbidden and keeps repeating and repeating in the mind. They're, they're usually pretty random, but there is one that comes more often than any others. It's like a recurrent chronic infection, and I caught it in church as a child. It goes something like this. <clears throat> Just as I am without one plea. It's probably familiar. But that... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, most of you have heard this at some time in your life. It's a very popular hymn. Uh, it's, it's the hymn that caused Billy Graham to be converted, and he always used it for his altar call for others. Um, but there is certainly no just as I am in our family when it came to church going. We were scraped and scrubbed, shoes shined, shirts ironed. There was time set aside during the week to memorize Bible verses to get a coveted gold star next to my name. From my weekly allowance of one dollar, a dime was carefully set aside to drop into the collection plate. We went to church prepared for church. Mom, can I just go in my shirt? With shirtless and shoeless and shorts like I play in the dirt all day long most every other day, uh, that would result in an instant smackdown. It was unimaginable to even suggest. Childhood memory is a shifting and swirling fog. How many of my present day beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors on based on misunderstanding of something barely grasped in the past? Over time, he began paying some, some attention to what the preacher was saying. I dutifully and unsuccessfully tried to believe in the historicity of the myths, that they were true events. The morals of the stories, though, often did stick, even though the stories were fabulous. I have no idea what distorted message I absor absorbed from the hymn, Just As I Am. Now, I'm pretty sure we've never sung this hymn at First Unitarian, but nevertheless, I hear echoes of it playing softly in our background, but a misunderstanding of the hymn, the message turned around somehow. Do we promote an image of a feel-good, come-as-you-are church? Charlotte Elliott, who wrote this hymn, in 1835 would be alarmed to know that it is used to defend a lack of preparation to insidiously promote the deadly sin of sloth. An invalid for the last 50 of her 83 years, she wrote, he knows and he alone what it is day after day, hour after hour to fight against bodily feelings of almost overpowering weakness, depression, and instability, such as the body causes me to indulge. Now, Miss Elliot, as an invalid, composed hundreds of hymns beside this, published several volumes of poetry, many still in print, and was the editor of several journals and all in the penumbra of chronic fatigue and depression. Jose Ortega E. Gasset wrote, I am I and my circumstances. If I do not save it, I do not save myself. As a, correlate, as a corollary, he wrote that life is what you do and what happens to you. Miss Elliot's body was what was happening to her. What happens to me is, just at, is the just as I am part of the equation. 
what I do with it and how I act in the world depends on how I act toward myself. What I did not learn in church is who or what I am. It is only recently that I have come to understand that I am a multitude, a coalition. These words we use like spirit and mind, those do not emerge from within me, but they emerge as a negotiation with a from a coalition of shifting and shimmering network with an illusion of continuity and consensus. There is no bright line that separates me from you. I am Elijah. When I am kind to the stranger, I am being kind to myself. And it is only through being kind to myself that I can be truly kind to the other. I went over my five minutes, but I'm done. Good morning. My name is Marie Ann, and I am a very proud member of this worship team and of this blessed congregation. Over the past six decades, I have spent thousands of dollars, thousands of hours working on accepting me just as I am. I am like all of us, so complex, nature or nurture, childhood love or trauma, life choices or fate, betrayal or respect, how I am and who I am has come from all of these and more. As some of you know, Maya Angelou is one of my favorite people and heroes. I'm going to have her assist me again today. She said, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. I am a daughter, a sister, a mother. My connection to those family members is, locked, is now gone. Those people have either died or are estranged from me. Am I still a daughter, a sister, and a mother? Who am I now? Through the past 60 years of my adult life, I have also been a wife, a girlfriend, and a partner. All connections long gone. So the words now are ex or former. Who am I now? We navigate our adult lives through our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. And as a dear friend of mine says, being a lady of a certain age, as expected, I got married, had children, bought a house, lived in the suburbs, and fortunate to take family vacations, camping, national parks, family visits, etc. Nothing wrong here, really. And as some did, I got a divorce. And then what? Single parent, worked hard, and then one day, I was alone. Who am I now? I have been an office worker, a business owner, a sex abuse counselor, an English teacher, an elementary teacher, and when I was young, several starts and stops at jobs. Now I'm retired, yet I'm still busy. I volunteer my time to disaster work, food distribution, humane society, pet therapy, and this blessed community. I spend time with friends, of course, these days on Zoom, sometimes in person. I continue to thrive and grow. Who am I now? Another quote of Miss Angelou's is, if you're always trying to be normal, you'll never know how amazing you can be. I tried normal. I got married. I had children. I lived in the burbs. I did it all twice. Then it was time to be just me. I remember the question I asked myself, 
and the answer. If I could do anything I wanted, what would I do? And the answer was fast. Teach and travel. And off I went. The second half of my life has not been normal. Wait, normal by whose standard? I started college again, and after graduating at age 49, I moved to Japan, and yes, by myself. I have lived and taught in four countries and then came to Hawaii. I've traveled to many countries and have been seen many places on my bucket list. Borneo, Cappadocia, Ephesus, Halong Bay, Angkor Wat, just to name a few. Ten years of adventure. Pretty amazing, I would say. What did I learn about me? I like people and learning about cultures. I like history and learning about long ago. I have a vagabond heart and love adventure. I really like this about me, just as I am. Maya Angelou also said, success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. Success is the opposite of failure. When the outcome turns out well, then that tells me that that means success is personal, different to different people. For me, I like what I do and have done, making people happy with education, animal therapy, feeling safe, providing food and shelter, and all that makes me happy. I like how I do it, teaching a language, sharing my caring and laughter through pet therapy, and hopefully feeding people's body and soul. Am I successful? Do I like myself? A lifelong project for sure. As Heraclitus wisely said, there is nothing permanent except change. A huge part of you and I is change. Nothing stays the same. Sometimes change is difficult for us. Sometimes I like change. New ideas, new learning, new growth. So I am who I am, ever-changing and growing, an itty-bitty part of this great universe, a small part of a planet Earth and all that that entails. So here I am now, closer to the end than the beginning, definitely time to accept myself just as I am. First. The title is, just in case you don't know, <laughs> is Just As I Am. So the first thing that I thought about was, who am I? To know who I am, I must also know where I get it. So I appreciate that. Where we all are is we are of our ancestors. We stand on the shoulders, and they are the ones that rise me up. I'm going to talk in a singular form, but my embrace is for everyone. What are the lessons that my ancestors left me with? What lessons, the skills, gifts, talents, did they leave behind? And who can I be, the wind beneath their wings, as I move away from this little plane? I am absolutely an unapologetic African woman, resilient, strong. There is power in knowing who I am. There are some wonderful parts about me, such as kindness and patience, compassionate, and I listen with my heart. I'm loving, I'm considerate, and I have a sense of fairness. And then there are some parts of me that is like a pit bull. 
They grab hold of you, a situation, until I see a white flag waving, then I'll stop it. <laughs> the wonderful part is that I want to be a rainbow in someone else's clouds. I am the proud daughter, the seventh child, from a seventh child, with limited education, but they taught me a lot of lessons. The one lesson that I embrace fully is that I am a child of the Most High, and I choose to call this imminent presence a loving God, or God. I'm a Christian. And I heard that it's acceptable to be a Christian here at the Unitarian Church, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm open to learn. I'm open to do and be and grow and to love and be in love. I look for possibilities instead of impossibilities. If somebody tells me that I can't do something, I'm going to work on figuring out a way that I can do it. So in our household, the Williams household, you couldn't say, I can't do that, or I can't be that, because my mother and father, they were not going to hear it. Always do your best. Be prepared, be punctual, show up, and be present. My parents were the wind beneath my wings, which is my other favorite song that's going to be sang today as well. Kindness matters, gratitude matters. Kindness is an act, is not an act. It is a lifestyle. And the theme for the, the month of August has been kindness. I like to always talk about some personal things when I give a talk. So my husband the other day said, I asked him, something and he said I thank you for all things so I asked him what things he said you make me feel so special all of the time and that really really affected me my husband right now is in the hospital he's okay but I needed to be here because I need to show up, and I need to show up fully. I appreciate him so much. I need to take responsibility of, on what I think about, what I say, and what I do. I need to do my spiritual work every day. So every day I need to be doing my writing in my gratitude journal, being thankful for all the things that I'm given every single day. And I need to do what my purpose is, and that is to bring light into darkness. I want to live my life with no regrets. I want to speak up for marginalized people, be present right here and right now. I do embrace the idea of I am my brother's keeper, and I need to right the wrongs. I need to be open in my communication and honest in my communication. It occurred to me the other day when I was walking that if I see an unjust situation happening, I am just as guilty as the person that is committing the wrong if I don't speak up. So I need to stand for whatever it is that's right. I have testified several times at the Honolulu Police Commissioning, Commissioner's meeting regarding the South African gentleman that was absolutely just killed right around the corner from the church. I need to stand up for those children when I'm subbing, when they're being bullied by some usually larger child. I need to stop, I used to stop all the time in Los Angeles because black men were always being harassed by the police. So I stopped and just observed to make sure that 
on my watch, nothing was going to happen to them. I appreciate the justice with the Black Lives Matter sign. I just get a charge every time I pass by this building. And that takes tenacity and a lot of effort on Reverend TJ to keep on replacing them, which is about 13 right now. So I do have my character flaws. I need to examine them and correct them if need be. I want to love without condition. I want to live a purposeful life. I trust when my time to meet my ancestors, they will say to me, job well done. And so it is.